welcome to Let's Talk AppSec Ops and welcome to part two of our little conversation about AI and machine learning. In the last episode, we talked about, you know, chat GTP, generative AI, how it's great for content generation. But there is, there's, you know, AI has been in the market for a while, being able to uncover patterns, which is, I think, where, where you were going, Luis, in the last conversation. And, and certainly some of the things that yeah, I've worked at in, 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 in previous lives around how to use models, AI models, to predict behavior, predict actions that should be taken. So why don't you go ahead and start, and then I'll kind of like jump in as always. Yeah, I think we talked about, you know, what the industry and retail is doing, right? A lot of these industries are pivoting. They're saying we have enough information to be able to make something autonomous or semi-autonomous. So being able to utilize the concept of prompting, right? Uh, banks did it with ATMs, put in a prompt, you tell, I need money. The outcome is my money. Uh, and then there's a receipt to kind of close out the transaction. Well, we're doing the same thing with chat GPT. Now, what we're going to be doing in security, in analytics, right, these large groups of data sets that we couldn't really minimize, now we're telling it, minimize it to X, Y, or Z. Give it to me in a format that I can consume in an email-like fashion with a little bit less verbose wording uh, to be precise for an eighth grade level uh, audience. Boom. And then it gives it to you, right? So understanding that we're still training it. We have to be trained in a different way of asking as well, because now we're going to be doing searches on Google that are different than what we were doing five years ago. Yeah, yeah. And and all of these things sit on top of, in essence, a model, right? So if you look at how people work with data and use that to train the model, you can make predictions about the appropriate next steps to do. So, for example, if I'm doing risk scoring or prioritization, um, I can leverage that data to say, hey, look, when I'm looking across all of the, the findings that, that are you know, within a, um, an ecosystem, like an armor code across multiple tenants, but the, the community as a whole, if I can look and I can say this CVE, he, CVE here is actually being remediated and being prioritized higher, hey, you know what, you should do that too. If I can also take information from threat intelligence to talk to our previous conversations, and take that threat intelligence data and say, hey, this is being exploited. There's a lot of dark shadow that also drives the prioritization. Where the AI comes in is really in helping understand the specifics of, you know, how we can tweak the model on data that's not known, right? So, you know, your, if threat intelligence is, is known data, right? I know that this is exploited. I can start searching the dark web. And, you know, a lot of those feeds also leverage some, you know, searching algorithms to match some of those things. But if I'm observing how different people are prioritizing, changing severities, uh, categorizing, maybe like this, this rule seems to be treated as a false positive in 90% of all cases, then I can leverage that model to predict. Um, you know, we do some things already in the platform today, which are teaching the platform how to perform triaging activities. So you're saying, hey, when we see findings that are coming that look similar to this one, perform these actions on it. Um, where it becomes interesting is when I'm trying to triage or perform triaging on you know, static analysis, for example, Yes, I can do that triaging internally with my organization, but then mapping it across the organization, the AI model becomes very specific to the team and the types of application they're developing versus something like CVEs, which is a much more industry-wide infrastructure, kind of like security vulnerability. You can, you can almost um, observe industry patterns that way. Yep. So, yeah. To kind of uh, wrap it up, because I'm getting pinged you know, from the AI, uh, when you have that predictive analytics and being able to set that up and say, look, we saw this in your environment today. These are the five things that you potentially could test. You could then choose it and then create an automated workflow. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. Exactly. But all right. Bounce. You go to bounce. So take care. Have a good meeting. All right. This is how we roll. Um, everybody, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe. Check out the show notes for AppSecCon end of June free conference, virtual, a lot of great content that's coming there. And you'll be able to access content from last year, which is all available on YouTube through the Purple Book community that we're proud sponsor of. Um, but with that being said, say thank you very much, Luis. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll Take see you care next time. Be safe.